Two GOP hopefuls are here with us tonight. We'll begin with Congressman Ron Paul. Uh, Congressman, welcome. Thank you. I just got to start with Herman Cain. I mean, the, the Herman Cain train, as they call it, seems to have hit the buffers. Politically, are you getting the sense that it's all over? Is he toast? Well, it's hard, hard for me to know, and I guess it's anybody's guess, but uh, I wouldn't su be surprised if he doesn't wait it on and, and does the uh, caucus in Iowa and New Hampshire election. But, you know, who knows? He could decide tomorrow what he's going to do and drop out, but uh, I have no idea. Do you feel sympathy for him? <laughs> well, I don't know whether the word sympathy at all. Uh, I just wished we didn't even have to talk about it. I wished... Uh, we would, uh, if he's having political troubles and he has to drop out, I'd rather him drop out because he used to work for the Federal Reserve and that he wants to give us a national sales tax. That, to me, has a great deal of effect uh, on all Americans if those kind of policies would be accepted. I mean, you've been married uh, incredibly successfully to your wife, Carol, for 55 years. Do you think that this kind of allegation, personal probity issues, are they still as relevant, do you think, to the electorate, never mind Washington, but to the electorate as they used to be? Well, probably not. I mean, if you take uh, what happened to Bill Clinton, it didn't seem to bother his reelectability, so I, I don't think so. Uh, but, but uh, I, you know, I place a little blame on the media. There's a lot of dwelling on this. Uh, but uh, it's, it's just too bad that we don't talk about the issues more than we talk about these. Just think how much time and energy has been put into this. Uh, but on the other side is people do deserve to know, uh, know about the people they're voting on, too. Now, Ron Paul, you're in, you're in New Hampshire now, and the race is hotting up big time. We are a few weeks away from when it gets really serious. Uh, Newt Gingrich appears to be on a roll. Latest polls from New Hampshire suggest he's doing well there. He's surging in Florida. There's clearly a bandwagon growing behind him. What do you make of this? Well, I, I guess you can compare it to many others that have done this. You know, two weeks ago, uh, Herman Cain was at the top. So things do change, and they've changed for three or four already, so I think only time will tell. And I think we uh, stick to what we've been doing now for the last year, working especially in Iowa and New Hampshire, and we don't go uh, up and down. We gradually go up and steadily go up, and I think that's a healthy way to do it. So we've moved into a position where most of the polls show that we're in second or third place and uh, in double digits. So we feel pretty comfortable about that. But uh, so far, we haven't had any spurts. We want to have the spurt at the last minute, you know, when the election occurs. Well, they say you can always tell who's the front runner because all his rivals begin launching attack ads on him, and you've sprung one on Newt Gingrich, a pretty biting video calling him a serial hypocrite. Um, explain yourself, Mr. Paul. Well, you know, he's had different positions on, on a lot of the issues, and, uh, you know, uh, doing environmental ads with uh, Nancy Pelosi and and supporting bailouts and all these things. So his, he's been flip-flopping in his medical position, his hardly free market medicine, and, and I think pointing those things out, how, how he's been on every side of the issue. He uh, hardly can declare himself now a conservative because, I, uh, you know, when he first ran, he described himself as a Rockefeller-type Republican, and that used to be, you know, uh, a pretty serious charge. So, no, he, he uh, didn't identify with the conservatives when he was in Congress, even though verbally, he might, but his positions weren't all that conservative. And Congressman, today the economy got a huge boost. The central banks and the Fed all got involved, and as a result of their direct intervention, markets around the world have surged mm. today. The Dow was up 490 points, you know, one of the biggest leaps in nearly three years. Is this bad news for the Republicans? I mean, if this has the desired effect on the global economy <laughs> and impacts favorably on jobs is Barack Obama sitting pretty <laughs> well 
Time will tell. This is very bad news for the country and for the world financial system, even though it looked pretty neat today and the markets responded. But this is a sign of desperation, and it's also a sign that our dollar is going to be used to bail out Europe and the banks over there. The banks are in hock with all this debt. They don't want these banks to go under, and many of those banks have, uh, you know, uh, branches from American banks, and there's credit default swaps that are allowed to go uh, uh, be, be used if they don't bail them out. So this is buying up bad debt. I think it shows how serious the problem is, and they're reacting uh, in a very, very major manner. But it's bad for the dollar. It's bad for the purchasing power of our money. It's bad for the inflation that's coming. And they haven't done anything. Matter of fact, this is exactly opposite of what needs to be done. When a world is swimming in debt and malinvestment, what you have to do is you have to get rid of it. But uh, in the last 50 years or so, people refuse to do it. And what they do is they prop up the debt or they take the debt from the sovereign states or from the banks and they bail them out just as we did in 08 and 09. It's just more of that, but it's a worldwide phenomenon. And they know how serious it is, but the solution that they're proposing is only prolonging the agony. It means that it's going to be a lot longer until we get real growth in the uh, world economy again. Congressman, it's been a pleasure as always, but I've got to leave you for one of your rivals who is waiting, chomping at the bit. <laughs> so thank you very much for now. Uh, all right, thank and you. And that rival, thanks, Ron.